G'day there guitar players, it's Michael here and in this video I'm going to show you not only how to do pinch harmonics but how to nail them every single time. So just in case you don't know, a pinch harmonic is this sound. And they are very popular in hard rock and heavy metal playing. So if you are a hard rock or heavy metal guitar player and you want to learn how to nail these pinch harmonics every single time, stay tuned. So the key to nailing pinch harmonics every single time is to first understand what harmonics are and how they work. So we have these things called natural harmonics and the best example of this I can give you is if you hover your finger over fret number 12 on string number one, and I mean directly over fret 12, and you tap it lightly as you pluck, you will get a bell-like sound ringing out and resonating. Basically, you'll be able to play a harmonic anywhere above the 12th fret. These are what I call harmonic nodes. And essentially, without getting right into the theory of the harmonics, what you'll find is at various Pythagorean intervals, such as a one-to-one -one ratio, your 12th fret is actually the exact middle between the point where the uh, string goes into the nut and into the saddle. So at the exact midpoint of your guitar is gonna be a harmonic node. And basically, if I fret the note, we hear a normal note, but if I touch it lightly, you're gonna end up hearing a natural harmonic ring out. So basically what happens is you have these nodes all over the guitar fretboard. Fret 12 is particularly conducive. You've got fret five, and you have fret number seven. Now, if you're a big fan of Eddie Van Halen, or bands like Slayer, and Pantera and Dimebag Daryl, you hear these kind of sounds all the time and you're definitely familiar with it. What they're doing is basically playing harmonic nodes either on one string or multiple strings at the same time and doing a couple of whammy bar tricks at the same time. Now you'll notice wherever these harmonic nodes fall, it's really easy to get them to ring out. But if you try to go to any other fret, for example, fret 13, there's no harmonic node whatsoever unless I fret a note. So if I fret the first fret and I pick it and then tap very lightly, you'll notice that now there is a harmonic node. And basically the way the guitar is built and laid out is the frets get smaller in length so that you're always maintaining the equal intervals no matter where you're fretting. There's a bit of maths and science to it, but if you want to look at a guitar fretboard diagram and do all the measurements yourself, you'll realize that if I go to fret two, no harmonic node, but if I fret fret two and then tap 12 frets higher, I'm gonna get that harmonic node there. And for example, uh, before when I had the open string, 12 works really well, seven and five both work pretty well. But if I fret one fret, I just add plus one all the nodes. So six should work now, and then eight should work, and 13 should work, and a bunch of the other nodes. Now some work better than others, and whenever you've got a lot of gain and a lot of treble, it's gonna make them ring out even better. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But guys like Tommy Emmanuel, where they do that wonderful waterfall technique, what they're doing is tapping into all these uh, harmonic nodes. Now, I know I've got a dirty tone and it's not ideal, but all these harmonics are mixing and combining these natural notes and these harmonics all over the fretboard. You really should explore them, and when you're ready, you can come back to doing these pinch harmonics. So a pinch harmonic is just an artificial harmonic, but we are picking and tapping the harmonic with the side of our thumb in the one same motion. And basically what you'll find when you first start doing these is you'll get them sometimes, but it won't always be consistent. And mind you, I cannot hear what's coming out of the amplifier right now, so hopefully there were some good sounds in there. But here's what you need to do. Let's say I fret uh, the third fret, which is a common kind of vibrato point that you're gonna get when doing pinch harmonics. So basically, if I pick that string and then I tap it, there may or may not be a node there, but if I go along at, you know, one millimeter at a time, I'm gonna find some of those nodes. And if I move one fret higher, all those nodes are gonna move along with my finger. So basically, depending on the note being fretted, the point at which you do the pinch harmonic is gonna change. But what I need to basically train myself to do, and what you'll need to do, is you pick, tap, vibrato, pick, tap, vibrato, pick, tap, vibrato. 
that's the basic step. You find the node, you pick it, you get the string ringing out, you tap it to get the harmonic, and then you add the vibrato to it. And what will happen over time is you pick and then you use the side of your thumb to tap the note. And eventually you pick it, tap it, and flow through all in one movement. Let's take a look at that up close. So basically what I'm doing is I am picking and I'm tapping to get that note to ring out. When I find one, I pick it and I tap with the side of my thumb. And then I have the vibrato. And eventually what will happen is I'll pick it and I'll tap in one movement. So you might have to do that in slow motion, picking, tapping with the side of your thumb and adding the vibrato. And you just gotta experiment with all the places where the nodes are. So that is how you use pinch harmonics. And if you just keep on picking and hoping for the best, then eventually you'll get them and they'll get more and more consistent. But if you break it down in this more calculated fashion, where you find where the nodes are, you practice picking and tapping with the side of your thumb and then eventually make it into one smooth motion, you will pick it up much faster. And I remember, this is one of the, the actual tricks that I learned off YouTube back when YouTube only had about 200 videos on guitar on it. And uh, I can't remember the name of the channel. He was like Van Halen Paratrooper or Paratrooper 5150 or something. And I remember learning how to do uh, pinch harmonics from this guy. And uh, I tried about two hours on a Saturday afternoon and I maybe got it one in every 50, then it was one in every 20, and it was like oh, discovering fire for the first time every time I got it. And then eventually it become more and more consistent. And only after trying to help other students who don't have the patience to sit down there for two hours on a Saturday afternoon and do it, I broke down the movement in isolation, I worked out the nodes, and I showed them this method. So I've used this to help hundreds of my metal students learn how to do those pinch harmonics and make them sound more consistent. So hopefully it's helpful for you. If you have found it helpful, please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you're interested in lessons, you can hit me up. I help people uh, in person in my city of Melbourne. I've got two studios across the place, uh, one each side of the city, and I've got some great online programs which you can find out more about at www.melbourneguitaracademy.com or guitarninjas.com.au for some of my online courses. But getting back into it on some more tips for playing better pinch harmonics. So a couple of extra tips for pinch harmonics. Now the biggest and most obvious one is making sure your amp settings or your tone are conducive to that hard rock heavy metal sound. So if you want to have better pinch harmonics, you want to have the gain up. Now in the beginning you might even turn it all the way up to 11 so that you can uh, make it easier for yourself and of course wind back the gain as you start getting more and more control. But you want to have lots of gain and even extra treble to help sustain it. If you've got an overdrive pedal, turn that one on. If you've got a wah pedal, maybe turn that one on and just leave it with the toe all the way down to give yourself a big treble boost. That will make these uh, harmonics just ring out and sustain so much better. And uh, again, you wanna make it as easy for yourself as possible in the beginning, and then you can clean up your tone a bit later as you get that control. So the second tip for better pinch harmonics is to use humbucker pickups. Now this is a Fender Stratocaster, I love this guitar, but I had it modified to include a set of Seymour Duncan Rails pickups. So I've got a Cool Rails in the neck, and I've got a Hot Rails in the bridge, and these are the same pickups that Iron Maiden use, essentially. It allows me to get a much more heavier sound because I'm a bit more into the heavy metal and fusion side of things, and I still got this clean one for funk and jazz and, and tidying things up, but humbucker pickups are gonna be a lot more conducive to these pinch harmonics. There is no one who is well known for pinch harmonics who isn't using these humbucker pickups. So go and use them. Even Eddie Van Halen, you know, he's got his humbuckers in his Stratocaster. So, Use the humbucker pickups, they will make it so much easier. Now the third and final tip is to make sure your guitar has its intonation set up properly. If your guitar has never been serviced or you got it second hand or you don't know what the intonation is, basically these little uh, saddles where the, the string goes in, if they are slightly off, a couple of millimeters uh, either side, what happens is your harmonic won't be directly over the fret, which means that when you go to do natural harmonics, uh, you're not gonna get them in the right spot and they're not gonna sustain properly when you go to fret them. This is also gonna in turn uh, 
affect the the node locations of these artificial harmonics when you go to do those harmonics there. So if you've never had your guitar serviced and never had the intonation set up properly, then go to reputable luthier or guitar tech and get them to do a service on your guitar and ask them to make sure the intonation is spot on. That's gonna make it so much easier to find these nodes and to play them consistently. Anyway guys, that's it for today. If you found it helpful, I would really appreciate if you like and subscribe. And of course, let me know in the comments below what you're having trouble with. I love making guitar content for intermediate and advancing players. I've got a ton of great beginner guitar stuff which you can find on my channel anyway, but I really love helping intermediate and advanced players. It's so much more fun for me, and I know you guys are in it for the long term. You know you're gonna play guitar, you identify as a guitar player, and it's part of who you are, and I wanna help you become the best player you can be. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.